I'm making a video. It's going to be probably a long one, and I'm going to do a few videos. Um, I will point out Adam did a update video for his Termcast Internet Radio Episode 2 show, which is at the website, do not god.com or Blogger Dome. Just look for this little green thing with the wavy shit, and that's it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So, I just figured I'll do another promo myself. Um, yeah. Uh, just noticed too, Oliver the Scott guy is in Canada. That's so, sort of interesting. Part two, I didn't see part one. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, I have to watch that. I have to get around to it. Um, evil arachnid guy has made another, another video. I got two others that I haven't even played yet. So, we got some work to do here. So anyway, I'll start off with Warbles, who did a video, um, snarky little crappy barefoot walk video there. Um, just a stupid video. So first off, um, you know, I made this the typical accusation, I'm somehow back on YouTube, and, um, you know, I put his video on YouTube because it's my understanding he can't play videos from other websites. So I did as a courtesy. You want me not to do it, that's fine. I'll be glad not to do it again. All right, so I won't extend you any such courtesy in the future. If I'm going to talk about you, I'll talk about you on my website. And fuck you, you stupid old piece of shit. Um, and yeah, I did, I've explained why I've put a couple more videos on YouTube. But I mean, let's get real. I've got like 10 videos, 10 real videos in the last two months on YouTube. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously most of my videos are not on YouTube. I don't want to use YouTube if I can avoid it. Um, and if there's a subject I think people, it's a video that needs to be seen more urgently, or the response needs to be um, accounted for by my adversaries, I want them to respond to what I'm saying, I put it on YouTube. Now, if you can find some other motive here, fine, go ahead and find it. I've never featured the channel. I, I mean, I've never, um, whatever you call that, um, partnered it or anything else and I hate YouTube I hate fucking Google um, there's a certain necessity that I have to make conversation with people on YouTube and on Google and that's the truth of it and uh, but to, you know to say I'm doing something dishonest or in some way backdoory or sneaky or broken promise or some other kind of bullshit you're just a liar you motherfucker <laughs> I mean that's just disgusting insinuation so fuck you, you bag of shit, okay, on to the substance of his video, which is just this long, drawn-out story about somehow, because you're an ethylist, which isn't that much different than an antinatalist, the only difference between ethylist and antinatalist is ethylists tie it to um, evolution, and they consider all sentient life to be in jeopardy, so obviously animals can't make the decision to stop replicating, we have to make the decision for them. And um, that's it. Uh, the rest of it's still all voluntary. Um, if, if they're going to throw me in prison because I'm going to suggest we should sterilize animals, well, go ahead. Take, to take your shot with that bullshit. You want to endorse that? Go ahead, asshole. Um, so whatever that whole thing is. Canada, how Canada defines genocide, you, you apparently have the definition. I think I could prove in a court that the word, word has never been used in anything other than a bigoted context, you know, context where people are saying, I'm better than you, which you can't prove is any part of antinatalism or ethylism. So your argument fails on that, by that category alone, that I can find distinct category differences between genocide and anything suggested by antinatalist or ethylist. So um, that's your slander, fucker. You want to call it genocide to believe life is a stupid experiment? Fuck you, all right? I mean, it has a consequential impact. If I asked a bunch of Christians, uh, is your life worth living if it was proven that Jehovah doesn't exist, that Jesus never existed? If that's proven that your God is the wrong God, and they say, I'd rather not have lived, does that mean they're genocidal maniacs? Does that mean you should throw them in jail? What would you say if I proved your God doesn't exist, that there is no synergy between you and the wildlife, that you aren't communicating with it, it's all a delusion in your head. If I proved it beyond a reasonable doubt, would you have some doubts about the quality or character of your life? 
the meaning of it. You're saying all this philosophical mumbo jumbo is important to you somehow. Well, what if I proved what you think is important is not real? Um, would your opinion of the worth of your life change then? The, the, with the worth of the suffering of the animals, whether it meant something or not, or whether it was going somewhere? So again, this is just about what you have concluded. You've drawn conclusions about reality that aren't consistent with my conclusions about our origins and our reality. And because of those differences, we've drawn different conclusions about the quality of this machine. Just as we've drawn different conclusions about the um, useful impact of putting sun foils on automobiles. Um, but fuck you, idiot. Slandering idiot. Lying idiot. Alright, so on to the other idiots. It's all this little group of whack jobs. You see that Quinta guys on all of these videos? You know, it's the same little, little clique of retards. <laughs> you know, so let's on to Rose Bushy. So Logic doesn't play nice, so I didn't play this yet. So I, I loaded it as I was going to play it, and I just never got to it. So let's load her up. For realsy this time. I'm assuming if I tried to play it, it wouldn't play. Oh, ads. There are projects. And there are game changers. Thanks, bud. I really appreciate having to watch ads. If anybody is still suffering under the delusion that antinatalism is a rational position, I think you need to go and check out how I sent one of the cult members packing the other day. Or well, didn't so much send them packing as they decided to go home and take away the ball. Oh, you're just so cool at rhetoric. You want to get to something real here? The thing is that when that happened, their parting shot to me was, well, why should I waste my time with somebody who simply doesn't care. And, and yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you're not going to get the argument, okay? You can't imagine, just to try to imagine, all right, like you actually understood that the sentience of all these animals was as equal to your own, that the value of their pain was just as substantive, just as real. So now you can't eat them anymore. You can't justify you know, birth rates of, you know, survival rates of 1 in 20 children. Human beings would not accept it if 20 of their children died for every one that survived to maturity. Human beings would find that disgusting, grotesque, they'd say, no, life is way too fucking stupid. And you, you can understand that, can't you? Is that beyond your imagination, fuckwit? All right, what we're arguing with is basic understandings of DNA molecules, evolution, and the substance of the workings of the universe. You think it's doing something purposeful. We believe it's doing nothing but killing 19 out of 20 children. Why should you waste your time with somebody who doesn't care? What, of course, you cannot continue to claim in that situation is that your position is therefore rational, because it is obviously not a rational decision that led you to... Uh, whatever, so you're going to argue about how people are arguing again, right? This, this is just bullshit, ad hominem, biggie, baggy, boogie nonsense. Make a real argument. The guy basically just said, fuck you, you're too stupid for my time. All right, you want to make an issue of it? You could say, I'm rubber, you're glue, all right? But this is bullshit. You're going to turn this into some sort of meaningful, rational conversation? I don't think so. You abandoned this dialogue. What led you to abandon the dialogue was anger and frustration. Which is understandable, because when I am discussing certain aspects of antinatalism, I can come across as extremely callous and uncaring. Um, yeah, rude, obnoxious, snarky, useless prick. Your comments, go read his comments, all right? Anybody, go read his comments. Nine out of ten of his comments are just rude, obnoxious, patronizing, um, elitist nonsense. We all think you suck kind of bullshit. 
You're a cult. I mean, it's all baby talk. And of course, an ideology that claims to be built on empathy, for example, will find that incredibly hard to stomach. But here is the problem. They don't just huh. claim to be based on empathy and caring. They claim that their position is rational. Yeah, that's right. I mean, our, our whole concept of empathy for a human being who has intelligence, we create context. That's how we're able to see past racial differences. You know, that's, you know, we basically matured and grew up, right, as a human species. We've sort of, we wouldn't have made the same mistake we made in the past. Like when the Europeans came over here and said Indians are savages and they're not really human beings. And then they did the same thing to the blacks. Right? We wouldn't make those same mistakes because our intelligence has given us context, accuracy, understanding. And so we, didn't, we don't fall for the obvious thing. Oh, they're a different color. They must be a different kind of animal. Yeah, we're not dumb like that anymore. So now our empathy is extended. And the same thing happens when you understand that animals who, yeah, okay, you don't, you, you don't eat the same thing for dinner. You don't make the same sounds, okay? But if you look inside their eyes, you can see... There is the same animal in there at the core. There's a little wanting creature who needs comfort. Um, and you can find that if you look for it. And so that the intelligent thing to do is to extend your capacity to care through that context. So through understanding your capacity to care is extended. The fact that we have to emotionalize every single logical principle in, to make it into an action you don't do something unless you, you create motivation for the, the feeling animal, okay? And much of that, though, can be perfectly rational. You can understand that it's good for mankind to land on the moon. And so you can work and make effort to land on the moon because you are emotionally invested in it. Even though it's just a purely logical idea. Like, yeah, we should go there and see what it's about. I mean, it's not that difficult to figure this out. This isn't hard philosophy. This is shit you should have been able to figure out when you were 12 years old, fuckwit. And even if we accept the reality of the situation, that any value judgment is subjective to some extent at least. Well, again, you're going to say that. It's subjective to some extent at least. It doesn't have to be subjective to any extent as long as it's based on a premise. If the premise is suffering is bad, sentient beings experiencing an uncomfortably, harshly uncomfortable, unpleasant sensation for which they haven't said, I like this feeling, and if, in fact have said or do indicate that they don't like having the feeling, that to impose that feeling would be wrong. Now you can understand that rape is wrong. You can understand a whole lot of things. Burning down somebody's house is wrong because they're going to cry. You can figure out a whole bunch of things that are wrong because they're going to hurt other people and make other people have to experience unpleasant sensations in the future. Dumb fuck. And that insofar as, reality, as uh, rationality even applies to it, and it does, the way it should be applied is in service of value judgments, in service of a value judgments, value system. If you do that, rationality can be applied correctly. In service to a value system. See, you got it backwards. The intellect should define the goals and use your emotions to motivate you to accomplish the goals. The brain, the smartest part, should define the goals. You shouldn't let your stomach decide. You shouldn't let your heart decide. You shouldn't let any other organ decide. Even your big, flappy, twitching anus. You shouldn't listen to it. Okay? You should intellectually understand what the right thing to do is and then motivate yourself emotionally to do the right thing. So you have it exactly backwards. That's why you're a fucking idiot. But then we need to look at the underlying principles, the rational arguments or the 
quasi-rational arguments that are presented in the service of antinatalism. And if we then find them wanting, the only valid thing left to do is to ditch them. <laughs> well, whatever. You have to have them before you can ditch them, fuck nut. So even that logic doesn't mean anything. You never had them, so you can't have them to ditch them. So this isn't even a coherent statement. You reject the theory that life is just a replicating piece of chemistry that has run amok, that doesn't have any sense of justice or fairness, and has no capacity to measure the efficiency of anything that it does in terms of how much suffering it squanders in the production of these gladiators. Um, maybe you don't like the gladiator metaphor, but that's pretty much all it is. It's a stupid war for the sake of war, so you can declare somebody the winner and then kill them. The whole thing is preposterously stupid, and it's only because you're a deluded little balloon-chasing retard that you're finding any excuse to try to preposterously defend it with this mush of an argument, which is basically, I, 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 I ditch it. I ditch it. Yeah, well, I ditch anything that has anything to do with it. I ditch your curtains. Your curtains are lame as fucking hell. I ditch them. And remove them from the construct that is antinatalism. What's with this faggy lamp, too? I mean, god damn, I ditched that, too. And this is a problem for the antinatalists, because two of, the, of their most fundamental cornerstones are the imposition argument and the risk equation argument. And both of them are fallacious. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. You're not imposing on something when you force it into existence. So if I, recreate, if I create something in a Petri dish, if I create a human being in a fucking test tube baby, okay, somehow I didn't create it. I didn't make it. I didn't bring it into existence. So I can create all the, I could make as million or million rats. I could fill my house with a million rats and then slowly pull, pull their eyeballs out and eat them. And somehow it doesn't matter because I didn't create them. I mean, this is just such fucking nonsense. There's, you can't escape the imposition argument. All you can do is say, I'm worth it. You can say that much. My satisfaction, my gratification is worth imposing the risk. Say it. Be honest. But don't cop out and say you're not imposing. You're dragging them to your carnival, you jackass. You're saying you're coming to Disneyland whether you like it or not. That's what you're doing. All right? And just admit it. God, this is so fucking pukey of you, you wimpy shits. You say life is so fucking good and you're so fucking confident and yet you don't even have the fucking courage to say, no, I know it to be good enough. I know their pain is worth my gain. I'll drag them to the fun park. Just admit what you're fucking doing, you goddamn fucking ditchable piece of shit. The imposition argument doesn't work because you cannot impose anything on something that doesn't exist. Right, you can't create anything. There's no such thing as creation. There's no such thing as a volition, a volition act where you sit there and cause something to come into existence that wouldn't have existed until, unless you created it. All right, I would exist whether my father decided to have me or not. If he decided to wear a condom, I still would have fucking goddamn existed. Because he had no control over my creation. My creation was completely outside of his fucking behavior. His sperm would have somehow got to my mother's ovum and it wouldn't have had anything to do with anything he did. This is a ludicrously idiotic argument. And if harm and suffering are inherent in existence, then there is no imposing once it exists, either because it is already inherent within existence. Like that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, and what does that say? What, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Yes, there's risks in gambling in Las Vegas, 
because there's risks, it's okay to gamble because the risk is always there. Or what? Gambling is always gambling and therefore gambling is okay because gambling is gambling. I mean, this is idiotic logic. Nobody, clearly nobody, is imposing anything on anybody. Well, whatever. So this is this is how this is what you people are going to stand on is the argument of the we didn't make it happen. We don't cause human beings to exist. We don't create them. We don't procreate. We magically watch it happen. We watch the immaculate creation. <laughs> I mean, fuck, you people are just incredible. We didn't make it happen. It didn't really happen because you decided to do it. No. And you haven't prevented anybody from existing, right? So you only had sex one time. You've never, through an act of volition, prevented a woman from becoming pregnant. So you had sex once, right? <laughs> You're a piece of shit. Similarly, the risk equation argument doesn't work because it is very clear, straight up, that no antenatalist alive is using this rationale in regard to their own existence. You only need to look at my previous video to see that if you switch off your emotions completely and you look at this from a purely rational perspective, you accept, accept the premise that's suffering yeah, you always do this shit. Go watch some crap argument I made before in a crappy manner that somehow it's somehow better than the crap argument you're making here. I mean, this is just such bullshit. Yeah, you've basically, all you've basically said is, is why don't you kill yourself? And that's been answered in three different ways, right? First, there is the fact that once you exist, you're caught up in a syndrome of I'm in the dungeon and I want to get out of the dungeon. And I don't want to die until I'm out of the dungeon. Okay, it's part of the addictive nature of life itself. It's like, it's like saying to the heroin addict, why don't you kill yourself? No, well, they want heroin, okay? They're not saying anything about anything else. They're caught up in the game, too. All right? But it's just a stupid statement to make. And, 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 that, and that's the weakest of the arguments. The other argument is, is once you exist... You are obligated and connected to all this infrastructure, all these other people that have to be, you have to consider in, in every action you commit, every breath you take, every word you say. You fuckers get all upset because I say a four letter word once in a while. And you all wet your pants and shit yourself and get all fucking hysterical over goddamn four letter words. And yet you're expecting me to kill myself and not impact all these other people that care about me or worry for me or need me in this world. What a fucking ludicrous sack of shit you are. You're all upset over four fucking letters? And you're going to tell me I should kill myself and it's not going to impact anything or impact anyone? Fuck you, idiot. Uh, the third good reason is you can't fight the fight if you're dead. All right, we're, we've made it clear. We're declaring war on asshole, okay? We're going to fight the asshole. We're the Frankenstein monsters who have finally said, fuck you, we're not going to kill ourselves. We're not going to eat shit in the ditch. We're going to fuck that goddamn doctor until he, gets, he gets, until he gets what he deserves. Fuck you, we're not taking your shit anymore, retard. We're going to shove it back up your nostrils, fuckwit. Huh. Are unacceptable and you then look logically at your own existence then the only valid thing to do with your own existence is to terminate it immediately and every antenatalist who doesn't do that is by definition at the very least a hypocrite all right so this is enough I, I'm this is really enough right I, I mean I'm not why well, should listen to another half of this shit this is these are your arguments First off, babies aren't created by people by volition. Second, um, people who are anti-natalists, who believe there's something wrong in the world, that um, are worried for the future victims, uh, they should kill themselves to be more effective in protecting the future victims. That somehow they'll prevent future births by killing themselves. That'll make them effective soldiers. 
That's your fucking rational theory. You call this fucking logic. You call this fucking logic. Now, the problem, of course, is that if you hear me say this, the only conclusion that you can take from that, or that seems to be a logical conclusion, or a, a reasonable conclusion from this, is that you're a petty motherfucking weasel who's only trying to defend your own little selfish, perverted, little in self-aggrandizing ego. And that's all it's about. I got to protect my own ego. I can't admit I'm a selfish motherfucking prick. And that's what you are. Is that I don't care. That I am utterly uncaring, unempathetic, with suffering. You're profoundly illogical, okay? People procreate and <laughs> um, soldiers are more effective when they're alive. And that I don't care whether you live or die. That is not necessarily the case. I don't really care. I would want you to want me dead because guess what, fucker? Okay, you can't get it hard enough. You can't. Nature can't give it up your ass too fucking hard for my satisfaction, okay? The harder you get it, the better. If anybody on this fucking planet has to have bad day after bad day after bad day, it should be you, you greasy piece of shit. Case, but for the sake of argument, let's assume that it is the case. Let's assume that I really do not care. And I couldn't care whether you lived or died or suffered or didn't suffer or whatever else. Does that matter? Does that have any bearing on how valid my rejections of the imposition argument? No. <laughs> so who's arguing that? The logic of your argument is what's vacant. And if none of these fuckwits can admit that, let's see how many people have rated this video. 25 likes. Who are you people? Who are you people who think people don't deliberately procreate? Who are you? And that you're not willing to admit that you're decided for your child that it's a world worth living in? You're saying you didn't make that decision for them? Oh my God. I mean, you people can't be this weaselly. You just goddamn can't be this big a fucking weaselly cunt. I mean, I'm sure it's fucking arachnid can be, and I'm sure this Q fucking fat tub of shit can be. But what's with the rest of you assholes? Why are you buying this bullshit? And the harm equation are? The risk equation, sorry? No. It doesn't. That's the problem. It doesn't. I could be... Yeah, you can just keep saying that. You can say that forever, but I, there's, you have no argument here, okay? And anybody who's defending your ludicrous argument that people don't procreate, well, I'm not going to repeat myself, but I mean, it's too silly. A fucking five-year-old could see the holes in your logic here. A fucking five-year-old knows their parents had them. An utter bastard here. I could be an utter, uncaring psychopathic prick smelly presenting this argument to you and still you would have to accept its logical conclusion I mean, I mean is that amazing i have to accept the logic that that well again, i'm not going to repeat it but it's isn't it too stupid yes that soldiers are better more effective if they're dead and people don't really have babies. Babies just have storks bring them. And you still need to reject the imposition argument, and you still need to reject the risk equation argument as a basis for antinatalism. Well, you didn't even argue the risk equation. You said we should kill ourselves. That was your second argument. But the risk equation is quite obvious, asshole. There's no way you can get around that, okay? You have a kid, you're opening the door to who knows what, okay? You have no right to think you're going to be immune uh, to the practical fact that your kid could die of cancer at six years old. It's just sitting out there waiting, and you're saying, I'm willing to pull the straw for that kid. And that's the truth of it. 
and there's no way to unravel that. There's no way to escape that. All there is, is if you have any balls at all, is to man up and say, yeah, I made that decision for that child. And just admit it and say, I'm worth it. I'm entitled. I have a right to do that. Just admit it. But don't do this bullshit and pretend you didn't make a decision. Don't pretend you didn't do it. God damn. I mean, there's your, your the, the dick fingerprints are all over the victim. That is tough. <laughs> I mean, it's your DNA that's inside of them, you stupid fuck. <laughs> I mean, damn. The evidence is undeniable. That is very tough for an antinatalist to swallow. That is very tough for anybody to swallow. Oh, whatever. I mean, this is just so unacceptable as an argument that, that you're going to be this patronizing with evidence this week. I mean, this is, this is the weakest goddamn fucking argumentation. And you, to be this pious and pompous is just so fucking grotesque. This leaves open the possibility that even if we accept the antinatalist concern with harm and suffering in reality, we may have to come to the conclusion, possibly, that there's some... We may have to, possibly. <laughs> you know, that's really clever. Nothing, nothing we can do about it. We can, of course, once we are in existence, when we're once we're dealing with an existing sentient being that is suffering, we can address its suffering. We can. Yeah. What? Address it how? Right. Yeah. You'll you'll put a band-aid on it. Yeah. Well, fuck you. Fuck you. I mean, quite honestly, if my father made videos like this, I'd kill him. I'd kill him. Ameliorate it. We can treat it. We can sometimes even eliminate it. We can do our best. Definitely. And uh, and if you care then I suggest that that's what you will be doing. When you come across anything that is suffering, you will do your best to try and... Yeah, yeah and just, again, this isn't the subject. The subject is your creation of the thing, okay? It's too late to fix it after you broke it, shithead. The point is, is whether you should have broke it, whether you should have fucking created it dragged it off to the amusement park. There's no point in talking about how you're going to be so really cool when it falls out of the roller coaster and smashes on the sidewalk and how you're going to try to scoop its brains back into its head. Well, that's all well and good, but the issue is should you have dragged it off to the, the fucking fun park in the first place? Make things better for it. That's what empathy leads you to do. But maybe, ultimately, we cannot completely eliminate it. And that is hard to swallow. That is very hard to swallow. It might even lead you to conclude if you are... Yeah, if you're not an asshole, it might lead you to conclude that, oh, wait, okay, the only thing that makes me want to have a kid is some kind of ego bullshit. Okay, like uh, I want to have a little me running around because I'm just so fucking cool. But yeah, I realize that it could have horrible things happen to it and do I want to be responsible for that and do I really need to do the 18 years of raising the kid thing and do I really need any no I don't so yeah fuck the whole thing yeah it might get you to think like that it might if you're rational logical um, fixated on suffering and pain and harm and so on it might either, either even lead you to conclude that existence is therefore intolerable and even then... Stupid is what it is. It's stupid. No one said it. you assholes don't find it tolerable. Obviously, there's lots of assholes who find lots of shit tolerable. Stuff I wouldn't pay... I mean, again, you have to pay me a billion, a trillion dollars to tolerate, and they tolerate it. But that's their business. They want dick up there. They want gigantic huge cosmic dick up their ass that's their fucking business it's when they shove it up my ass that's when it becomes my business fuck nut even if that is your conclusion it still isn't logically valid to conclude that non-existence is therefore preferable 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, non-existence isn't preferable to having your brains on the sidewalk. I mean, bullshit. Okay, it's it's just logical to say, hey, guess what? There's a gazillion, 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 gazillion times a gazillion things that don't exist. <laughs> and they seem to be doing just fucking fine. I don't hear them screaming anywhere. Unlike my kid who's screaming on the sidewalk. So maybe he should go sit in the stands with all the other gazillions of things not existing and not fucking screaming. Oh, God, you are so fucking dumb. An existence isn't anything, including preferable or worse or better or anything else compared to existence. Non-existence, literally, logically, rationally is actually not an alternative yeah non-existence doesn't exist <laughs> i got you with that one didn't i <laughs> non-existence doesn't exist na, 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 na. i mean really i mean how fucking ludicrous can you get now, non-existence is not a real concept. You can't possibly not exist. You must exist. You're, that's all you're saying here. Nobody could ever make you not exist by not fucking the woman and not having the baby. You will exist no matter what because there is no such thing as non-existing. I mean, god damn, you are fucking idiotic. I mean, if this was a this I can't even this is this is more painful to fucking endure than like the third season of Ren and Stimpy existence there is no alternative to existence if you exist you exist and that's the end of it there is no alternative no oh, whatever this this mush is yeah duh if you already exist that means you already did it and you already have been that's right so you can't unbe that's right now we're not talking about undoing the people who exist shithead we're talking about the future you see what i mean saying you can't not have a baby that you already had but you can prevent having a baby you haven't had. Can you get that? There's a thing called the past, the present, and the future. We're talking about the future. You can't undo the present. You can only prevent things from happening in the future. Retard. For existence. This also applies to hypothetical future beings. There is no alternative to their existence. Within the, hypothetic, in, within the hypothetical in which you posit their existence, they exist. <laughs> they exist when you imagine them. Then they exist. Oh, okay, so that's all I have to do is, is hypothetically imagine you with a big fat cancerous tumor eating your fucking head and you screaming in pain and it will happen oh good super cool i can't wait please make the video i mean this is this is goddamn you you are the most disgusting creature on youtube there you won my award most disgusting creature on youtube and once that is the case once that context has been established, there is no alternative. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I mean isn't it, can you anybody make any sense out of this? He's saying there is a future and there's nothing a thought can do about a future. If you change your thoughts, you can't change the future. Your behavior will be the same whether you want to do it or not to do it. It's going to happen anyway. Even if you become an anti-nihilist, somehow you'll still end up having babies. I mean, this is just idiotic. This is not a question of not caring. This is not a question of not giving a damn. This is a question of having your head so far up your fucking ass that you have, you have broken some sort of real world physics and imploded the universe. Of taking reality for what it is 
and there is no way out of that. Uh, of whatever this again again there's no way out of it i mean imagine somebody saying this about slavery well there's no way you can undo slavery but slavery exists you can't unexist the thing that exists you can't unexist it it exists i mean uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we have to accept reality for what it is doesn't mean that reality is hunky dory and everything is grand. Uh, you shouldn't. Well, apparently you think it's hunky dory enough to drag somebody off to the little fun theme park you call Earthy, and that they're going to have a good time and say thank you very much, Smelly Papa. Do your best to address the problems that do arise within reality. <laughs> yeah. Yes, take, deal with it when it shows up. That's right. So if your kid's retarded, then shove them off to the old retard home and then get on with your life. There, yeah, you've done your job. Aren't you charming? And, and tell your depressed kid to kill itself. If your kid's an antinatalist, tell him he's a hypocrite unless he kills himself. Yes. That was never said by anybody. But it does mean that you need to accept that reality is what it is. Whatever that means. Reality is what it is. And it doesn't matter what people think. It'll be what it is. And it doesn't matter whether people are Republicans or Democrats or whether they rub frogs all day. Everything will be just the same as it is. Because it is what it is. What fucking baby talk. Is... I'm sorry, I you know that's insulting babies. Babies aren't this goddamn stupid. Like I've had conversations with goddamn five year olds that are more rational than this. What you find it as after that, do your best. Do what you can. <laughs> yeah, this is just so stupid. Just accidentally have a bunch of kids and then try to clean up the mess as it arises. But don't think ahead of time whether it's a good idea to have kids or not. Don't family plan. Just let it is what it is. To make reality better. Even if it is only an improvement from utter rock bottom to desperation. That's an improvement. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep selling that shit. And I should impose that on a child. I should say to, I should think to myself, oh, I'll let my child be born into shit world and he can make it into it world instead. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. That's something you can... I can give him a job. He can go fix the world. Yeah, that'll be his job. I'm not gonna fucking do it because I'm a lazy cunt. But, yeah, he can go clean up the dioxin and shit. Yeah, it'll be good for him. It'll be a good job for him. Let him save the world. I'm too busy fucking the bitch and having irresponsible children to satisfy my own selfish desires. Oh, God, you are weak validly try to aim for. But antinatalism, if it is based on logical abortions such as the imposition argument. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, right. You don't impose when you have a kid. You're not you're not making a decision for somebody. You're not you're not introducing any kind of uh, of created life form. You're not creating a life form. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is just so stupid. I mean, if I dumped the baby on Mars and it survived, right? Like, like two babies, like, 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 uh, what? Blue Lagoon, right? It'd be like Red Lagoon, right? <laughs> right? It wouldn't be my fault, right? Oh, this is just so stupid. And risk equations is a dud. It's a damn squib. It's going nowhere. Right. There's no risk in life. There's no winners and losers. There's only everybody's the samest. And there's nobody who gets... Nobody has a bad time. Nobody kills himself. 
Nobody's horribly depressed for 50 years. Nobody's anything like that. No, no, everybody has a good time. It's an amusement park. Of course everybody has a good time. Just ignore all the skulls on the sidewalk. Especially in nature, right? Where 20 out of, 19 out of the 20 kids dies before they reach maturation. No, that's not a risk. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's a certainty. <laughs> you fucking idiot. And I don't care. That's right. How many professional philosophers are behind this idea? You, you don't care to listen to the rational arguments that point out to you well, there's no point, because, yeah, no, this you are too stupid. There's just no point, right? I mean, when somebody's saying they don't even understand what procreation is, and they don't think it's creating, yeah, where's, where can you go from there? You can't go anywhere with a person that's silly. Like I said, a five-year-old could understand the connection between their existence, the word creation, and their parents. A five-year-old can understand that. There's no stork unless somehow their parents push the stork <laughs> out the door. If they're behind this idea, they are idiots too. And that's the way... Idiot, heal thyself. I mean, you are the consummate idiot. They ought to build a fucking goddamn 500 foot piece of shit. Write idiot on it and your name. It could be progress. Okay. Well, anyway. Sorry, this took much longer than I thought it would. Uh, just a hard, the most horrid video I've ever watched. The, it's just the silliest, stupidest thing I've ever watched. Just incredibly, the most ignorant, inane, insipid argumentation I've ever seen on the fucking internet. Yeah. I, I want to know who you 25 people, come on, out yourselves. Who are you fucking crazy bastards? Who the fuck are you crazy fucking bastards? Skyzer is one of them. <laughs> yeah, no surprise there. Oh, Canadian atheist. I laugh every time I hear the words professional philosopher. Yeah, who even uses that word? It always sounds like official bullshit artist to me. I don't, who's too, who even uses the term except for him? You always laugh every time you hear it. You want to show me where you heard it last? Go show me where you heard the words professional philosopher last. I can't remember hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Oh, God. These people are so crazy. So fucking crazy. So, anyway, enough. Yeah, sorry. The long video. And I still got, uh, you know... Aka, 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 aka. I don't know why this word, I'm having such trouble with it. We well, you know, spider guy. We need to have a war. <laughs> yeah, soon. Yeah. In Scotland. 